Good morning, maggots. It's that time of year again when I temporarily come out of retirement and brush dust off of my X and Cap Neko Ransona to talk about something so incredibly spectacular, I absolutely have to add in my two cents. So I'm sure you are aware of the new meme trending on Twitter called Super Straight. It started on TikTok when a 16-year-old named Kyle uploaded a new video where he talked about how he was called transphobic because he wasn't romantically or sexually interested in trans women. He proposed a new term to set himself apart from other supposed straight people who don't have a problem with dating or sleeping with trans people. This term was called super straight. This video would later be taken down because his mother got doxxed and sent death threats by trans activists. However, you can't keep a good thing down and it started an entire shitposting campaign, mainly on Twitter and TikTok. They developed their own vocabulary based off of the lingo normally used by SJWs, developed their own pride flag, which is just a rectangle with black on one side, orange on the other. And yes, it was doubtlessly based off of the color scheme of both Grindr and Pornhub. I don't think this was an accident. I think this was on purpose just to be ironic and funny. Pretty soon, trans activists would receive a small taste of their own medicine when a huge throng of people started posting in the hashtag, declaring themselves to be super straight, along with the relevant icons and flags. And whenever they would criticize the meme, they would always get ratioed, similar to how they would ratio those who criticized their ideology. And so, obviously, people would try to discredit this movement. Two weeks after the meme went viral, a 4chan thread was made detailing how they were going to use the movement as a Nazi dog whistle. This was obviously a false flag campaign, judging by the dates on the posts, and that 4chan took no interest in the meme until well after it went viral. Goes to show you that if the social justice crowd or the feds cannot find Nazi symbolism or dog whistles within any social movement that opposes them, at least not anywhere else besides the fringes that are rejected by the rest of the movement, they will just make it up. This was an obvious shitpost campaign. I recognize this. However, I have a somewhat controversial opinion on the matter. This might be my literal-minded, autistic brain talking, but Super Straight needs to be taken seriously as a social movement by its own followers. Not only put that mask on about putting your heart and soul into this hashtag, but actually care about it. There are two reasons for this. First of all, it's funnier that way. The more seriously you take it, the funnier it is for everyone involved. The social justice crowd is obviously taking it seriously. So should you. They will take it seriously even when you're being ironic and acting like a stereotypical social justice warrior. They will take it even more seriously when you also take it seriously while still acting like a stereotypical social justice warrior. The more seriously everyone takes it, the more powerful it will grow. Which leads me to my second reason, which I will take the rest of the video to explain. Even if super straight is a made up term, the sexuality it describes is very real, and this movement can actually be considered a real, unironic civil rights movement. Plenty of people can attest to only being attracted to biological men or women, whether they be straight, gay, or bisexual. Plenty of people do not wish to date trans people, and they cannot change this aspect of their sexuality any more than a gay man can will themselves to find women sexually attractive. However, there are many trans people who simply can't accept this, who insist that straight people can find trans women attractive. This is a very real phenomenon, and multiple trans activists have complained about so-called genital preferences being transphobic. Basically, it's suck the dick, bigot. And when anyone points this out to the trans activists who actually care somewhat about optics, they will deny that anyone is forcing them to date trans people. Or they think we're being transphobic when we point it out. Even though they think it's even worse to point out problems in the trans community, than actually lift a finger to stop it. Despite the fact that we can provide a huge mountain of evidence that this does, in fact, occur on a regular basis, not only to straight people, 
but also gay people and lesbians, the latter of whom certainly bear the absolute worst of it. So really, is it all that unreasonable that we come up with a new term for a sexuality that only takes biological sex into account instead of gender identity? Judging by how simply calling yourself straight isn't enough to get thirsty transgender incels to leave you the fuck alone, why not classify it as its own independent sexual orientation so that these perverts take a fucking hint? The answer, obviously, is a resounding no. It's not unreasonable. It's a silly term, but it gets the message across quite effectively. You think that simply declaring yourself to be super straight or super gay or super bi wouldn't offend people, right? It's nothing more than describing your sexual orientation so that the kinds of people you aren't attracted to don't waste your time by asking you out on a date. And even if somebody made the, the mistake because they didn't know any better, they would be mature and rational enough to be a good sport if they get rejected or friend zoned due to not have due to the fact that they're not sexually compatible. I, uh, I'm sorry for the bad date, but you're really cool. And even if you hate me, I don't want to have to be your mortal enemy, and- What? No, we are not enemies. I just do not wish to date an Earth male. Oh, that's way easier. But you would be a formidable ally on the battlefield. Yeah! I'm fascinated by your Earth fighting techniques. Absolutely not. You know, many people, including gender-critical feminists, have pointed out this rape culture in the trans community. When they crave sex with non-trans people so much that they smear anyone who rejects them as a romantic or sexual partner, as a meanie transphobe for not wanting to date or bed them. And this gets even worse when the victim in question is a lesbian, then she's faced with all manner of vile crap, like death threats, vandalism, and even rape threats. Because you know, engaging in a in homophobic corrective rape is only okay when a lady with a dick does it to what they derisively call a TERF, or trans-exclusionary radical feminist. They do love their acronyms. So to utterly no one's surprise, TRA Twitter had an utter meltdown over it, accusing it of dehuma dehumanizing trans people. Despite the fact that no one from the movement is dehumanizing them, they do that themselves through their vile behavior and doubling down on supporting the very rape culture that Super Straight hoped to criticize. So why would they act this way? Do they, see, do they think that simply being rejected as a partner, or even gently friend-zoned, invalidates their gender identity? I'm going to say something extremely controversial right now. When they tell us that it's invalidating to encounter a person who knowingly excludes trans people from their dating pool, they are being 100% correct. There are multiple things in life that would invalidate a trans person's gender identity. All the little things that build up little by little. People using the wrong pronouns, referring to them by their birth name, a dog who is more comfortable around women than men, being just as frightened by trans women as they would be any other man. The people who detransition, thus giving off the unwelcome message to other trans people that they should also probably just give up and not waste so much time to trying to be someone they could never hope to be. The fact that trans women have an unfair advantage over biological women in women's sports, no matter how long they were on HRT. The fact that trans women cannot menstruate. The fact that biological males and females have different needs as far as medical issues go, and this hardly changes after undergoing gender reassessment operations. The fact that Zoom calls during the coronavirus pandemic made trans people more depressed because they have to look at their own face and realize that the HRT and other operations are plunging themselves into the uncanny valley. Then there's the not-so-small things. The fact that HRT and bottom surgery can't do anything about their sex chromosomes or bone structure and does hardly anything to change their muscle mass. The fact that their voice sounds very off. The fact that if they undergo bottom surgery, they are left with a glorified fleshlight or dildo at best. And all the complications that come with it, including my personal favorite, 
The Frankenstein vagina smelling of feces because the surgeon used portions of the large intestines to build the vagina, which is permanently stained with the smell of shit. Which leads us to the one thing we're talking about. Being rejected as a romantic or sexual partner because the other person prefers biological men or women instead of those who undergo medical procedures to become a grotesque parody of the opposite sex is absolutely another thing they would find invalidating. Because it implies that biological men or women have something deep and intrinsic about themselves, it's even beyond natural baby making, that they can provide in a relationship that trans people could never, ever hope to provide. This sets them apart from so-called cis people, and it absolutely infuriates them. Especially when you take into consideration, into consideration that this places them into a very awkward position. If they take the rejection well, and respect the other person's reasons for not wanting to date trans people, even if it hinges on sexual taste or something much deeper, they are forced to admit to themselves that there is something about themselves that sets them apart from biological men or women, that there is something that biological men or women have that they do not have, and that they can never hope to have, no matter how much HRT or bottom surgery they undergo, and that it's doubtful that they'll even get it even if they get a uterus transplant or penis transplant or whatever from somebody of the opposite sex. Which is basically admitting that trans women are not real women, and trans men are not real men, which is something they cannot find within themselves to ever do. However, if they refuse to take it well, and they accuse their would-be partner of being transphobic, even doing terrible things like slandering them, getting them fired from their job, or threatening them with violence, that would count as sexual harassment, even a part of the transgender rape culture I've mentioned minutes ago. So how exactly does engaging in abusive behaviors over being rejected not make you a potential rapist? Seriously, how? I'm not being facetious. I'm completely serious. This leads me to my next point. Transgenderism is a postmodern idea created to justify the need to play pretend as the opposite sex because they have a psychological hatred for their own biological sex, since the rest of the universe doesn't really give a damn about their warped view of reality, and especially of their own self-image. The little things I've mentioned previously will, pop up, will slowly pop up to slowly chip away at these delusions. The two choices when that sort of thing happens is to either accept to, for, is to either, sorry, to either attempt to force the rest of the universe to conform to your view of it, or to give up and accept reality as it is, and just go with the current to save your energy. Obviously, the average trans person will choose the former, and there is no length to which many of them won't go to to validate their own worldview. They will destroy their own body with hormones and Frankenstein bottom surgery. They will groom kids whenever they can in order to convince them that they are also trans and drag them into the same fucking pit they dug themselves into so they don't feel so alone in their insanity. They will use whatever power they can to get the government to confiscate children from parents who don't buy into their radical agenda. They will engage in censorship, cancel culture, and intimidation to shut anyone up who opposes them. And of course, they will build up an entire rape culture to intimidate anyone who doesn't wish to get romantically or sexually involved with trans people, whether they be straight, gay, or bisexual. Over the past decade, the actions of trans activists have proven that transgenderism as a whole is a direct threat to the civil rights of pretty much everyone else. Since they cannot feel comfortable in their own skin, unless they force everyone else to conform to, conform to their worldview. I wish I could say that as a matter of live and let live, let people live in their fantasy world as long as they don't bother others, but the fact is, it's inevitable that they will eventually bother others, because anyone who doesn't choose to live in this fantasy world with them, it makes, them, it, makes it crumble before their very eyes. 
So that so for the sake of the gender identity they chose for themselves, they have to exercise unrighteous dominion over their fellow man. They will do terrible things to other people who refuse to comply. So, silly or not, it is very refreshing that we have super straight as a meme to fight back against this encroaching tyranny. And the best part of it is, we are using many of the same tactics they once used against the right in order to do it. We have our own pride flag. We accuse anyone who criticizes us of being, of being super phobic and dogpile on them. The same way they once dogpiled on the people they hated while not resorting to the same vile shit they did to us. Heck, many Twitter accounts who have criticized the meme have gotten banned due to mass reporting. We're not afraid of being cheesy or being cringy because we're having fun. We're parroting the left and pointing out serious social issues that plague the mainstream LGBT community. As silly as Super Straight is, it's an important first step in regaining some lost ground to the TRAs who have spent the last several years gaining all the institutional power they could ever hope to obtain, exercising their will upon their enemies. It's a silly meme that you can't afford to not take seriously. We need to start out by telling these subhuman sacks of putrid garbage that we are not afraid of their bullying anymore. We begin by telling them that we will first take a stand against this rape culture they have built up, that they are not entitled to our bodies, nor the bodies of super gay or super lesbian people anymore. Through their resulting temper tantrums over us taking a stand against their perverted behavior, normies will finally see them for the entitled, disgusting perverts that they were that they always were, be emboldened by what we do and stop letting them gain ground. They will no longer be permitted to run the asylum anymore. When, le when leftists look back at this time, they will bitch and moan about super straight just as hard as they bitch and moan about McCarthyism or Gamergate. We owe this to everyone, straight, gay, bisexual, or lesbian, who have suffered under their tyranny. Don't fuck this up. It's a trap.